state. You will not invade or subjugate any state, I guess, of the union. Now, for some reason, whoever recorded these off MSNBC and posted them, I noticed when I was watching it this morning, the audio is super low. And I forgot to tell the guys to fix that before I told them to play it. Uh, but we'll see if we can boost it while we talk to Stuart Rhodes and then uh, maybe play some clips of it a little bit uh, later. Turn it up on the player itself and then on the uh, computer system itself. We have to remember that Chris Matthews is one of the nastiest people on television. I mean, O'Reilly's got his problems. Beck's got serious issues. Keith Oberman isn't perfect. But when you talk about old time slime balls from D.C., political operatives, Chris Matthews is right up there at the top. Globalist, anti-American at every level. Now, in the two five-minute clips we have up on PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com, Kurt Nimmo wrote an uh, article about it. And we'll post that article up for folks here in just a moment as well that are watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. And I'll give the radio listeners the headline. They act like Stuart Rhodes is some terrorist. They basically talk about, well, we saw the terror attacks in the mid-1990s, alluding to Tim McVeigh. And how dare you try to go out and teach these ten things to police and military to keep their oaths, to not confiscate guns, to not violate the Bill of Rights and Constitution. They make jokes about foreign troops when national level exercise 09 a couple months ago, FEMA, like we'll pull that up. We'll show you FEMA, NLE 09, FEMA. You put NLE, national level exercise 09 into Google. The number one thing that comes up, at least last time I checked it, we'll see right now, that comes up is FEMA.gov. And it talks about foreign militaries training to take on U.S. terrorists inside the United States. There it is. And it talks about all these troops from foreign nations training. And then it's been in the Toronto Star and the Washington Post and U.S. generals signed deals to use Canadian and Mexican troops inside the U.S. during emergencies and to fight terrorists. And I've been to urban warfare drills where this is going on. Then they make jokes about Stuart Rhodes and Oath Keepers getting police and military to say we won't confiscate legally owned firearms. When I had the colonel on... Just six months ago, who was running a drill, we learned about it in the newspaper with quotes from the sergeant and the colonel in Arcadia, Iowa, where they were practicing locking down the town of 600, 640 or something in the article. The point is 600, small town, and going door to door asking if they could search the homes and cupboards and closets because a gun dealer was on the loose looking for the guns. Now, I got the colonel on. He admitted this on air. There's bills in Congress to build FEMA camps. The FEMA camps are already built. That was declassified in the mid-80s in Rex 84. The, the Homeland Security documents we broke, the MIAC reports we were sent by a federal marshal and by state police in two different states that we broke, that made national news said, gun owners, veterans, libertarians, conservatives, in the Fed people, people that have an American flag on their car, get us out of the UN stickers, are the number one threat to America. Now, Stuart Rhodes comes along, top staffer for Ron Paul, Harvard, educated, top of his class lawyer, one of the editors of the Law Review, uh, Army veteran, paratrooper, retired out of the Army from a paratrooping in rough terrain, low altitude drop. Good guy, he goes and says, well, we're going to teach the Bill of Rights and Constitution and get military and police to even privately just learn about their oath again and declare it. Clearly, America's going to hell in a handbasket. And I wanted to get him up because he was a gentleman, but he's also very well spoken, knows more about the Constitution than I do. People can say, well, he let him run over him. They wouldn't let him talk. You can watch these clips up on the site. And they just threw the kitchen sink at him. And it was such a, d a disgusting example of cowardice. But remember, my final point, we're going to Stewart, is this. My final point is this. Remember, the Southern Poverty Law Center has been demonizing Stewart and I together. And I'm trying to demonize Stewart like they do Ron Paul by using me. But Ron Paul hasn't forsaken me. He still you know, comes on the show. They're really scared of us, though, because we know that's why we're on the enemies list of the White House in mainstream news, because my films are hurting them, like Fall of the Republic. 
This is the guy who not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, not five times, more than ten times, only put two clips and follow the republic, says if you say you don't like government health care, you say you don't like socialism, you are a racist and hate black people. And he says all the Tea Parties hate blacks and all the Tea Parties hate Mrs. Obama. This is invoking racism. These are the racists. They are the worst type. Invoking race, invoking division, invoking this. When you never hear about that from Oath Keepers and tying them in in articles right next to white supremacists. And when Stewart came back and said, you try to demonize me with that, they said, we don't do that. Liars to boot. Stuart Rhodes, I wanted you to be able to come on live on the radio, not be censored, and respond back. Because I guarantee Chris Matthews will see this. Your response to the world, to Chris Matthews, because they wouldn't let you talk, what do you have to say to them? Well, I mean, I let him go like that because I wanted to contrast uh, his behavior with, with ours. And, you know, we don't get in shouting matches. We just present the facts, the facts of history, and, and we present our message very cleanly. All it is is that we're going to stand down. I kept trying to twist it and say, oh, you're, you're, you're uh, recruiting our men, you know, and you're trying to, to what, what are you going to be able to, you know, what are your plans for opposing the government? You know, and, and look, he, he asks, why, why, why are you trying to reach police and military? Well, who else is going to be going out there and, and complying with orders? So he knew what he was doing. They know exactly what our mission is. They don't like our mission. You know, it's, it's a, whether it's the political right or the political left in this country, you know, it's even oligarchy. And they might compete with each other for power, but one thing they do agree on is they want their orders followed. Like right now in Red State, we're being attacked by, by a, a guy who says he's a conservative lieutenant colonel. And he's attacking us, too. And he wants to re rewrite the, the, uh, the oath to be as though it was the same as the Nazi oath. So you know, the, the Nazi oath was, I'll read it to you real quick. This is, this is the bottom line. Here is the oath in, in, in Germany. I swear by God, the sacred oath, that I shall render unconditional obedience to Adolf Hitler, fear of the German flag and people, supreme commander of the armed forces, that I shall at all times be ready as a brave soldier to give my life for, for this oath. And whether it's the Southern Poverty Law Center, whether it's Chris Matthews, or this guy in Red State who says he's a colonel, they want it to read the same way here. They want it to be, I shall render unconditional obedience to Barack Obama. Uh, President of the American people and Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, I should really give my life as a brave soldier, period. And that's the only oath they want. And so they want to, they want to pretend like our oath is that way, that it's just to the president. And so they, they do a lot of you know, dancing around and smoke and mirrors. That's the bottom line, though. They want more All you're obedience. saying is the forces need to learn what they swore to, and you give them an opportunity, a focal point, to think about that and have a personal dialogue with their friends their family and their colleagues and there's nothing better it's similar to what i launched getting seven states 800 plus cities with activists to say we're not going to follow the patriot act we're going to follow the bill of rights constitution declaration of independence and to see them there afraid of the police and military having having patriots reach out to them instead of the adl and southern poverty law center they're filling them full of my and homeland security uh, propaganda and, and, and as you pointed out you're not drawing together a force you're not doing paramilitary training they were saying they said we don't trust military and police with your message they're armed and they have authority over us they are scared to death no they only have authority through the constitution and bill of rights and we're reaching out to them and they hate it they want to keep the american people and the police and military separate from each other so they can be controlled by these offshore banks yeah, exactly. It's just a, you know, like we're going to explain in our, in our tomorrow, we're going to have uh, Lieutenant Commander, or actually he's the commander now, he's promoted, uh, David Kelly, acting through the Navy, is going to explain that, look, the oath, we, don't, we wouldn't want a military coup either. We're going to write a rebuttal to that Perry guy um, calling for a military coup. And you've, you said you've said that oh, repeatedly. You've said that repeatedly. Sure, but they, but they want to twist it like that. They want to say, oh, you're trying to, you're upset because you lost the election, and so now you're, you're uh, basically trying to, trying to coordinate a military coup um, to impose your will on the American people against their expressed will in the election. Horseshit. You know, all, all we're saying is, is we don't want, I don't care who is, who's in power, who, win the, who wins the election, they can't just do whatever they want. It's not a democracy. It's not majority rule. It's a constitutional republic. I don't care who's in power, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. They don't get all the toys. They think they, think they get all the toys. And so they, they want those toy soldiers to march when they push the button. And they get really upset and start crying with little, little kids if they don't march when they push the button. 
Well, Stuart, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. I know their playbook and their ball game, and you're not stupid. You know this, too. What they're going to do is they're going to try to infiltrate your groups, even though there's no command and control. They're just the oath. It's an idea. Ideas are bulletproof. There is no organization. You're going back to the founding documents. They're going to commit crimes in Oath Keepers' names. The key now, though, is we're going to catch them when they do it, just like we catch police provocateurs. And But just know the Southern Poverty Law Center is very dangerous, very dangerous people. They were running Elohim City, according to FBI documents, uh, that was in control a lot with McVeigh of some operations. So obviously, I told, just like Pat Buchanan warned you on Monday, he said, get ready to meet the national media. They're coming after you. You, you, they are scared to death of what you're doing and so and so just look out buddy these people mean business